Goro Goro Oil, they hear me whine whine. That if you say you turn that Giriba on top of the chairman television station, Wazobia Max TV. Bella, they sweet me because all of us, they are alive and well in sound out of mind and body to see the year 2020. So I go tell everybody when they watch, Happy New Year! I know say my voice, not sweet, like Tiwa Savage old. Eminado, Eminado. But I go sing from now to show say this year, now the year of all of us. It is your turn to shine. It is your turn to shine. Oh, it is your turn. It is your turn. You will arise and shine. The reason why I sing that particular song, I want to use you and not use myself. Now say, now you go work to make sure say your life better. If you sit down there, continue to the look. <laughs> Nothing go change, oh. Forget saying a new year. And I go relate them to our country, Nigeria. If we sit down, fold our hand, they look say, eh, Nigeria go better. And we know what made Nigeria better. The thing not feel better at all. We promise when I say this year, we go to give una every Tuesday and Thursday from 7:30. I see the heart based on cocoa of the matter as it concerns our great country, Nigeria. Watch, learn, and know as the thing go be. In the tradition, what would they always they do? We'll carry person when Sabi. Make you come sit down with us inside studio to choke out inside the talk. Our Ogonga visit on a person when we say, I don't go just introduce her like that. I go clear my throat because now our first visitor for the year 2020. I go introduce her. Then I go come back, give her the breakdown. Today, we won't go back so that we go know the lessons we will learn so that moving forward, we go do well to see say our country go the permanent site. The person went there with me inside studio. Now, the editor of Montage Africa, his name na Ogaremi Adebayo. Ogaremi Adebayo, welcome to Cocoa of the Matter. Thank you, it's my pleasure. Good day to you. Uh, Ogaremi Adebayo, I could just like, we could just pause small. Make I just fire down straight before I start to ask the questions. Today, we won't do what everybody call retrospect. We won't go back to all the things we happened for 2019 so that we go do the lessons we will learn so that for the year 2020, we'll go move forward. On top of the show today, we will go discuss matter when concerned how governments they fight this war against corruption and some people won't go to prison. We will also talk about the release of Oga Sambo Dasuki and Omo Elisho Ore a day before Christmas. He just be like saying after Christmas, now he make that one possible. We will also talk about the work when we say EFCC they work as they concern cyber crime for Obodo Nigeria. We will talk about the quarrel when they always they happen between ASU and federal government. It happened last year. We will also talk about the shite movement and the whole talk about Oga El Zagzaki who go chukwa on top of NSAS matter because plenty of people inside of Nigeria see the complain say then they harass them then they ask them questions who go also talk about the election when it happened for 2019 what will be the lessons when we learn how we go take ensure say moving forward elections inside of Nigeria confusion no go day tension no go day pressure no go day we also talk about Oga Walter or Noge former CJN hammer be knock for head what will be the lessons when we learn and how did it take happen they will come go back to the message when President Mohamed Wali being dropped on the 1st of January 2019. We will come shock him with the one winning drop on the 1st of January 2020 to see whether indeed, no matter where you go, remember the road that will lead you. But it's Thomas. We will go enter inside the discussion. We will not go waste time. First question, Oga Remy Adebayo. This whole action when we say EFCC carry the war against corruption, and finally the conviction of former governor of Abia State, Senator Oju Zokalu. How you take reason the matter? Well, I believe that is one of the uh, major takeaway of the anti-corruption drive of the Buhari administration. Uh, I may want to credit it to the present administration because it, the conviction actually came through this. But beyond that, it underscores the fact that the, uh, the anti-graft agencies, especially the EFCC, is tidy on the prosecution of the senator in this matter. We should not forget that there has been so much uh, uh, anger around the nature of uh, prosecution that we have been having when it, uh, it touches on the current administration. People have said that it is uh, lopsided. Some people have said it is witch hunting. Some people said it is political. Uh, this year, we have seen uh, a member of the party, of the ruling party, APC, uh, in the person of Senator Oji Uzokalu, doctor, who was actually a, a former governor of Abia State, getting convicted for uh, 
The fraud of 7.65 billion Naira, to me, is a very good uh, takeaway for us to end the year. We don't like to see people in prison. It's not because the man is in prison, but because it tells a lot about uh, the drive for accountability in governance, delivery of good governance. It tells a lot about uh, the day of reckoning for public officials to know that whatever they do, while they have the luxury of office, we want to come back to them. So uh, the conviction of uh, Senator Oji Kalu is one of them. And it's not just him. I think the FCC has done wonderfully this well. They, they have had a lot of convictions. They have had a lot, I mean, a lot that you can point out in, 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 in the drive to fight corruption. So to me, it is very good. And uh, for a, a sitting senator, a former governor, don't forget, some of us are even asking, we have been querying that, why is it that all these former governors are making the Senate their resting place, their retirement place, you know? They have been going there because um, we feel that they are there to protect certain interests other than Nigerians' interests. So if one of them is picked up and is being convicted like what we have with Dr. Oji Kalu, it is a good one for Nigeria. It's a pointer to the fact that our anti-corruption drive can work. It shows that the FCC is committed and it shows to me again that uh, we can deepen the fight around good government, I mean, for good governance, for, so that the people of Nigeria can get what exactly belongs to them. Oga Remy Adebayo, it's good as you take answer that question. Make sure we just go to the next one. And on the 24th of December, plenty of Nigerians hear the news say, finally, DSS don't release Oga Dasuki and Omo Yele Showare on bail. I want to ask you, you see this one as better Christmas gift? Have you the reason say maybe the government will get planned as they take on that level? The administration for releasing them for, they have only done what is expected of them. Logic expected that when the law, the court of law grants uh, a, a bail to an individual, it is only incumbent on those that are concerned to release the people. But when it becomes the will or the discretion of those that are driving the law to say this is the law I want to obey or this is not we are not obeying, then we are creating a room for anarchy. So uh, the re release, especially for uh, Colonel Sambo Dasuki, who had been in uh, custody for more than uh, four years, it, 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 to me, the only way I can only describe it as a, a, a victory for the Nigerian people, victory for those that have raised up their voices to caution the president, to caution the administration that we cannot continue to go this wrong way. And thank God that they listened. I hope that they are going to listen. More. And don't forget also that beyond Dazuki and the, uh, and, the, and Ashore, we have Agba Jalingo, we have a lot of other nameless Nigerians that may have been languishing in cells, different facilities today that nobody is aware of. I think the same abnormality should be extended to them so that the country that we want to see, a democratic nation that all of us can be proud of, could be built through that. The to arrest issue, I don't have problem with their prosecution. If government or the nation has anything about them, they should be prosecuted around the, the presence of the law. But when you begin to take people endlessly, or the agencies of government determine or that they can just keep people regardless of court or a court order, then we have a problem. And don't forget also that there was a court invasion, invasion by the men of the, uh, the Department of State Services that really brought this anger up again. Mm -hmm. These should not be seen in a democracy that Nigeria said it's partisan. Mm -hmm. Oga thank you very much for that way where you take answer that question. Make I go to the next one. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, they really carry their work for head for 2019. And it'd be like, say, we see better results as they consign the fight against Yahoo, Yahoo. And other people, when we say they collect what don't belong to them, make I ask, you think, say, 2019 are good here? I, I personally feel that the uh, Economic uh, uh, Financial or the EFCC, sorry, uh, I believe that they are doing the, the right job. Uh, if you gauge and aggregate the perception against Nigeria outside of the country, you understand that one of the problems that you have could only be uh, issues of identity uh, theft, issue of uh, cyber crime, all sorts of things, fraudulent activities by Nigerian, few Nigerians that have uh, bad intentions against the country that want to get rich at any cost. So I believe that uh, tightening up the cyber, uh, cyber space to forestall 
the, uh, the crime that could have, that would happen from that area is very, very nice for us. I was pretty late to uh, attend a conference sometimes ago, about three years ago, at the Army, Nigerian, Army, uh, uh, Nigerian Army Resource Center here in Abuja. And I discovered that cyber crime could even go beyond the issue of fraud. It could go down into the neck of our security. It's very, very dangerous for us. So if nobody is doing anything around it, it means it's going to give us a lot of problems. You can see, or just think about Nigerians or anybody all over the world that have worked all their lives, and somebody just come around and undo them through identity theft or any other thing. So I believe that the EFCC is doing right, and it's a drive that all of us must embrace and support them in, not just for financial crimes, but also for security matters too. Mm. Okay, Bayo, you talk saying Nigerians must come together and support the EFCC for this fight against cyber crime or people when they collect what don't belong to them instead of being the user for the Nigerian people. Make I ask education they're very, very important. It got any year when we say ASU and federal government, they no go quarrel. I won't ask you based on the expert where you be. How would take we find permanent solution to the problem of say uh, funding for higher education inside of Bodo, Nigeria? Thank you very much. Uh, first, of all, first of all, I believe that uh, there may not be an, a permanent end to labor grounds or labor uh, issues. There will always be a time that ASU and the federal government or whoever are the employers are going to have problems. It is part of developmental issues and it's part of the challenges that come with trade matters. That is why we have industrial courts that also handle issues like that too. But in this issue, I think uh, the only solution I can uh, proffer as a Nigerian that has passed through the institution is one, there must be consistent interface between the Federal Ministry of Education, the Labor, and the Academic Staff Union of Universities, not just of universities, but in other institutions as well. Most often, there are grouses borders on uh, the funding of the university and the welfare of the workforce. Uh, if you look at the resources of the nation today, almost everybody wants to get a chunk. But the problem is that you have the resources that can go around. So as long as we do not have that one, uh, I believe that all we can do, or what you should expect that, is that in a matter that ASU is asking for uh, a, 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 a rate, or asking for some conditions that, are not that may not be immediately attended to, federal government should be proactive. We shouldn't wait until when we have issuance of ultimatum before we begin to call for meeting, before we begin to call for dialogue. And ASU on its own part must understand that as long as uh, they want the, uh, the university system to be well funded, Nigeria has a limitation as at now. That's just the truth. Uh, an effort through TED Fund and other uh, agencies of government, uh, development partners and donor agencies should be attracted from foreign orga organizations too to help Nigeria. Because whether you like it or not, we are looking at the fact that uh, the, research, the research in our universities are not really taking place as they are supposed to be today. Are we coming up with solutions that meet our local challenges? And that's where the university is supposed to be leading in, climb, in, sorry, in, in, in the same, in the same uh, climbs. So, as long as these disputes are going to be here, we still have around the one about the payroll and uh, all sorts of, I believe that uh, it is going to be dialogue and for stalling those before they come to uh, the end, before, uh, uh, so that we can solve our problem without getting to the level of strike action. We must understand that uh, strike every time or the issue or threat of strike all, all this time, they disrupt academic calendars, which is not good for the destiny and future of the generation of Nigerian students that will take over leadership after these people. Ogare mm. Adebayo, uh, wisdom, wisdom too much. And like you don't talk, now understanding now in matter. Our people in the for house, look, we just continue to watch. We they do retrospect that is countdown of the big big story will happen inside Nigeria political arrangement for 2019. We don't do 10, 9, 8, 7. We go go break. When we come back, we'll continue based on Coco of the matter. No go anywhere. We they come back. Welcome back to Coco of the Matter. For those who just join us, Happy New Year. Does it matter? Yes! 
Because we tell you now, say, on top of Wazobia Max TV, this year, and Coco of the Matter, now everything will concern Nigerians. Now we will carry the give you now. Okay, Remy Adebay, the editor of Montage Africa, there with me inside the studio. I will look the biggest stories inside Nigeria political boxing ring for 2019. We don't talk about how the war against corruption they go and how Dr. Uh, Senate, uh, Sen Senator Oji Uzo Kalu, former governor of Abia State, in the college room and parlor inside prison for the next 12 years, depending on how that case will go. We don't also talk about the release of Colonel Sambo Dasuki retired and Omo Eleshoware on the 24th of December. We also talk about how the EFCC, they carried their work for 2019 in the fight against Yahoo Yahoo and people in the college which you know belong to them. And before we go down break, we talk about the quarrel when they always happen between federal government and ASU. Our Ubon Gare visitor, Gare Miyadeba, you don't tell us, say, now understanding na in matter, if everybody, when they involve, go come together, sit down and discuss, we go see solution to this problem. But we enter number six. Our people, they talk, say, you know if you beat the kid, make you tell them, make you not cry. Last year, we see plenty of protests from shy people, and we see the proscription that is then cancel IMN, say, you know, go they exist again. Make I ask, Ogare Remy Adebayo, you, you think, say, for this 2020, we go see solution to this problem, and peace go reign? I think the first thing is that, uh, like uh, uh, Mr. Femi Falanon, the lawyer to the group, uh, IMN and uh, Ezezaki and his wife have consistently said, it's not difficult, it's not different per se from what is caused about the matter of uh, uh, retired uh, Colonel Sambo Dasuki. Once the court gives an unambiguous judgment that an individual should be released on bail, the first step is for government to release on bail. I remember that before that time, the, uh, the sect, I mean, they were quiet for some time after the encounter, the, 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 the challenge between them and the, and the, the, the entourage of the, uh, minister, of, sorry, of the chief of army staff in Kaduna some time ago. And it was after this man was released, I mean, it was pronounced to be released by the court that this problem started. So for long, we said that, yes, um, the group was wrong in picking home uh, any form of uh, confrontation or attacking uh, innocent people or even security agencies. Two wrongs can never make it right. But why are we saying that? We felt that government should obey the rule and others. Once you do that, if there is ground to prosecute this man as government had wanted to, definitely, I don't think any court of law will cite on anything that threatens national security. So, and when the uh, organization was proscribed, myself and few others were saying that instead of proscribing an IMN and uh, designated them to be a terrorist organization, which is in the wisdom of the president and the government, that boxing them underground may not be the best solution because we do not know when they regroup. Because we're talking about people that have a kind of ideology that they fight around, a sect that belongs to a particular faith. So it is not something that we can just tackle on the surface. So we feel that there is still uh, an ample opportunity for the government to reconsider the need, maybe possibly the imperative of coming to terms to have a sort of dialogue we did not dialoguing them on the, on the, on the, on the, on the, on the, from the, from the part of, of weakness, no. But dialoguing with the leadership of, of the IMN on the part of security, so that you could actually understand what their grounds are against the country or against the leadership of this country. And like I said the other time, the starting point is to, uh, to, to obey laws, obey court order that says this man should be released. When that is done, I believe we are going to have peace. Hmm. Uh, Adebayo, you don't talk, say, based on saying that the law, now they cover everything what they do, make we they obey and respect within our law talk. Make I ask this very important question. Inside our law, talking about the law, minimum wage now, now 30,000 naira. President Mohamed Bouhari don't sign now. But one thing to sign, important thing now for the workers to receive alert, make I ask you. <laughs> We do have anything to go. You think, say, Nigeria workers go smile this 2020? Well, I think that uh, minimum wage is the right of workers. They are entitled to it. The law actually specified a limit through which they can actually come back to the table to renegotiate the minimum wage based on the dynamics and inflation that uh, occurs in the economy. And I think that is what this one has uh, come with. 
I recall that uh, before the election, the, uh, the Senate of the Federal Republic uh, passed the minimum uh, bill to act, I mean, bill into act, and President Muhammad Buhari actually assented to it. It's a very good one. That I think that was in April, shortly before the, uh, the handing over. But uh, the problem we have after that was the, uh, the story around the consequential adjustment, uh, then dragging up to federal government paying is adding category of its workforce, leaving others out. Then states, through the Nigerian Governors Forum, said they could not meet this obligation. To me, uh, I think once that becomes the law, when the president assents to it, it becomes the law. It becomes the right of the Nigerian uh, uh, workers. They are not going to beg, or they, are, they should not be begging for it again. Unfortunately, it is a time like this that we have governors that think about, uh, we have a structure that, that is called federalism, where they, are, they have to think about, okay, this is federal and this is, uh, this, is, this, is, this is the state. These are the same people that do not allow the government to function. So we have to look at all these areas to talk about uh, why this must be complied with. But we must remember also that uh, states, some states do not have the financial muscle to pay this. So it is expected that perhaps the labor in their state could go and reason with their governors to see if there could be some kind of adjustment. But we also know that we have some states that should even pay more. We have states that should be paying about 60,000. We have states that should be paying about 50,000 Naira minimum wage. So I don't know what is stopping labels in those areas. So it tells about the independence of the, the three tiers of government that we say that we are running. I think this should play in here now. But for me, when this agitation started, was it last year, I was of the opinion that labor should not be asking for uh, increased wage as at now. And my reason why not being an economist is that once that is, when, when, once that becomes feasible, the market will respond to it. Like you are saying now, your landlord wants to get more, your, the market woman wants to get more, the transporter wants to get more because they don't discriminate. If I go to the airport, I go to the park now, nobody cares, nobody listens to me to know whether I'm a private person or I'm a public official, I mean official. So the market responds to it equally. I was thinking that uh, what could trickle down to the people is that this morning or the addition that we are asking for could be asked in terms of uh, increased purchasing power so that the 18,000 Naira that we are having before could be taken to market and buy something more for all of us. But as it is today now, uh, I don't know what, go I believe, uh, what, let me say, I don't know, I should say that what government should do is to uh, go back to, uh, to refunding, maybe you can fund more, the small and medium scale enterprises to get money into the, uh, the, the, the informal sector so that people in the agri sector, people in other small and uh, medium scale enterprises can get more money to, to, to spend. Because as it is, it's only government people, or let me say people that work with government that can take more. Mm -hmm. Unless we do that, if you can get that money to stimulate the economy in the SMEs, then we can talk about deploying more into infrastructure. Me and you, if you have access to education, if government can build more rules, if you can have health care, then those of us that are not taken from the federal or state coffers can think of taking something directly through those means too. Mm. Thank you very much for the way we say uh, you they hit the matter one after uh, the other. Uh, as we do um, on top of cocoa of the matter, now 30 minutes, and 30 minutes no reach to look all this matter. But those when we say they house, they watch. And uh, know Sari talk say Tuesday, Thursday. Una go continue with all the discussion. Say Thursday, 7:30 on top of Azubia Max, you will watch her. Coco of the matter. Oh God, I mean, we thank you very much for this first part when we say we discuss. Our people waiting for us. Remember, Nigeria and our country no go spoil. We could join our hand together to move this our country go the permanent site until I come back on Thursday so that we'll continue this countdown of all the big things we happen for 2019. Una bye bye. To enjoy more of this our we'll Ogunge videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.